India-Canada diplomatic standoff deepens in the latest external affairs minister S. Jayashankar assured the Canadian side that he will take action and the government of India will take action if they provide specific information in connection with the Khalistani leader Hardeep Nijar's killing, adding that India is open to looking at it. Speaking at a discussion at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, Jayashankar said that there has been a lot of organized crime in Canada over the last few years and the Indian government has given a lot of information to Canada regarding this. Remember, now this comes after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau publicly accused India of carrying out the June assassination of Canadian national Hardeep Singh Nijar, a pro-Khalistan figure. Uh, one, we told the Canadians that uh, this is not the government of India's policy. Two, we told the Canadians saying that, look, if you have something specific, if you have something relevant, you know, let us know. We are open to looking at it. So, but to, you know, to understand the context of it, uh, in a way, you know, because the picture is not complete without the context in a way, you also have to appreciate, Ken, that uh, in the last uh, uh, few years, uh, Canada actually has seen a lot of organized crime, uh, you know, relating to, you know, the secessionist uh, uh, forces, organized crime, violence, extremism. They're all very, very deeply mixed up. We have been, you know, talking about specifics and information. We have actually been badgering the Canadians. Uh, we have given them a lot of uh, information about uh, organized crime leadership, which operates out of Canada. Uh, uh, there are uh, a large number of extradition requests. Uh, there are terrorist leaders uh, who have been identified. Uh, our concern is that, uh, you know, it's, it's really been very permissive uh, because of uh, political reasons. Uh, so we have a situation where actually our uh, diplomats are threatened, uh, our consulates have been attacked. It is said that intelligence was shared amongst the five eyes about uh, the assassination is what they're calling it. And the other thing is uh, apparently the FBI um, has told uh, U.S. Uh, Sikh leaders that there are credible threats to them. So just wanted your reaction to that. I'm not part of the five eyes. I'm certainly not part of the FBI. So I think you're asking the wrong person. Addressing the UN General Assembly, External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar said that political convenience can't determine response to terrorism and extremism. He further added that respect for territorial integrity, non-interference in internal affairs cannot be exercised in cherry-picking and asserted that days when a few nations set the agenda and expected others to fall in line are over. Addressing the 78th UN General Assembly session, UN Ambassador Bob Ray said that, and I quote, democracies are under threat due to foreign interference and, quote, cannot bend the rules of state-to-state -state relations for political expediency, unquote. Nor must we countenance that political convenience determines responses to terrorism, extremism, and violence. Similarly, respect for territorial integrity and non-interference in internal affairs cannot be exercises in cherry-picking. When reality departs from the rhetoric, we must have the courage to call it out. Without genuine solidarity, there can never be real trust. This is very much the sentiment of the Global South. The democratization of technology has opened mindsets, instilled confidence, and inspired innovations. Excellencies, in our deliberations, we often advocate the promotion of a rules-based order. From time to time, respect for the UN Charter is also invoked. But for all the talk, it is still a few nations who shape the agenda and seek to define the norms. This cannot go on indefinitely, nor will it go unchallenged. A fair, equitable, and democratic order will surely emerge once we all put our minds to it. And for a start, that means ensuring 
that rule makers do not subjugate rule takers. After all, rules will work only when they apply equally to all. We need to recognize how things are connected. Combien de gens dans vos... Like many people in your countries, I can assure you that Canadians, they are also worried about the cost of living. They are also concerned about artificial intelligence, foreign interference, misinformation and disinformation. Amid the ongoing diplomatic row between India and Canada, India today has accessed NIA court documents which reveal how Babar Khalsa receives large amount of funds from Sikhs living abroad. In the investigation, it has come up that Babar Khalsa has built up a nexus with Daud Ibrahim and other banned outfits. NIA raided 50 locations in six different states. One person identified as Jora has been taken into custody by Punjab police. Sources have told India today that Khalistani and gangster elements based in other countries were funding overground workers in India through Havala channels for drugs and weapons. Meanwhile, NIA's charge sheet has revealed how Khalistani terrorist Arshdallah runs an extortion gang and supplies arms and drugs from Pakistan through drones. The NIA charge sheet also reveals how Khalistanis are targeting the Punjabi music and film industry. A big crackdown by NIA on the key elements, the Khalistani terror modules now under scanner of the NIA. And what we know is that this pertains to six states and three cases of the NIA. And there have been raids which have been ongoing in 30 locations in Punjab. There are several locations identified even in Haryana, at least four of them, then in Delhi, Punjab, uh, Haryana, Rajasthan. Uh, we also know Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh are other locations where raids are currently going on and Punjab police officials are joining and associating with the raids, especially in 30 locations. Uh, they have been ongoing in Firozpur, Bhatinda, Moga, Sangrur, Patiala. And we've been told that a man identified as Jora, who's a close associate of gangster Arshdeep Dalla, has now been detained and has been brought into Chandigarh. Uh, there will be questioning done, uh, but clearly NI is looking at incriminating evidence. And this at this point of time is very crucial. Remember, uh, the Khalistani extremist groups are already under pressure with properties being seized. Uh, other properties of 19 terror groups have now been under process of identification and there would be a lot of action which would be done on ground uh, but clearly at this point of time a uh, lot of action is happening in Punjab with camera person Chandi Ram this is Kamaljeet Sandhu in Chandigarh for India Today. The NIA's mega crackdown continues on the Khalistani elements. The National Investigative Agency is raiding six states, 50 different locations to also nab all those people who've been assisting Khalistani elements sitting abroad. Now, what we're learning that largely the raids are happening in almost all districts of Punjab, but these raids are also spread across Delhi, NCR region, Uttarakhand, etc. Six different states is where these raids are going on. What we're learning that those who will be detained as a part of the raids for assisting Khalistani leaders, they will be taken to the NIS Chandigarh office where they will round it, they'll be round up and there will be further interrogation happening. With video journalist Alok Das, this is Shri Chatterjee for India Today.